So a situation that, that, that this might happen is if Scott's kind of passing my guard in this, to this side and I go here and I manage to like recover, but then he turns it into a really strong knee cut and he starts driving in. And now that push doesn't really do as much. Go ahead, stay here. And he's even tr maybe extending my leg behind him now. And you can see how in this position, because he's pinning my, pinning my leg with his shin, even if I've created a strong push, his forward drive is going to be driving down into my leg as well. So kind of put some forward pressure, Scott. Like getting up doesn't do much, right? I can't actually get out from underneath him. So in this scenario, I don't necessarily have to grab across here, but I'm just going to grab across to his pants like this. Okay, and even if I miss the pants, I'm just gonna keep my hand down like this. Because if I face his knee cut here and try and fight for the underhook, which would be like good, maybe I can get like a half guard thing, but if he reweaves his underhook, then I'm really screwed. So it's like, it's kind of a gamble on this side. But if I already feel that my legs have, are past that 90 degree angle where I can't really get them back without some sort of other dynamic movement, going for the underhook is risky, but just kind of bring your arm across like this is surprisingly strong because for him to continue the knee cut, go ahead and continue passing, Scott, he has to kind of cross face me. But I've already put myself in a position where technically he hasn't passed my guard yet. Because <laughs> it, like it was like an early turtle. I saw it, I knew, I, like I'm gonna let him pass on my terms rather than him pass on his terms, you know what I mean? I could have kept fighting and like, no, I just really don't wanna pass, but then he gets the underhook and then we pass like this. That's not quite as nice, so. If you know it's like, okay, we're already kind of past the point of no return, let's start thinking about the next phase of battle, which is gonna be this recovery movement. I'm gonna start positioning myself there early so that he can't really cross face me, he can't really underhook me. If I leave my hand on this side, this cross face is coming, and it's coming hard, and it's gonna leave you some gee burn. But if I bring my hand across like this, it's, I kind of have some defense. And even if he cross faces over that and tries to get my face here, it's not twisting my neck. It's just kind of going into my face and both my arms are underneath it so I can kind of like lift it off of me. And that's surprisingly uh, powerful. Just like in the, the arm you normally would underhook with, just being like, okay, I'm not gonna underhook, I'm just gonna bring it here. And then as Scott continues to pass in his, his knee cut, go ahead and keep moving past me, Scott. You can kind of do the same exact motion. So just instead of being at a stiff arm and getting up and then recovering, we're just going across. So instead of up, we're just going here, flattening out, crawling up from there, recognizing that he might try and jump around to my back and coming back in early. So let's do that full kind of motion here. Just do a normal pass this way and I block, but then he turns it into a good knee cut and we're here. I'm gonna just go right to this position. Scott continues to pass. I kind, of, I kind of gave him a little bit of resistance from getting this collar. I bring my elbow down and start getting up. And right here, he's either gonna keep driving into me or try and jump to my back on that side, right? If he tries to jump to my back, I'm just kind of going with it. And if he just continues pressuring into me, I can just turn back in and recover, okay? Does anyone have any questions on that? Do you need to see it again or anything? Yeah, Albert, that was you, sorry. So in some situations, it kind of depends, that, and that's a good question. So like, if, his, if you have, have your hand here, like if I go like this, this is pretty good. Because if he continues passing, having that leg is kind of the same thing as the stiff arm. I might let go earlier, but it's, it kind of just keeps your hand there. But it's in the same direction, doesn't really matter where it goes. Sometimes when this happens, go through, I'll, I'll use both hands, and then as he continues to pass, I'll be trying to like grab his pants like this. So that as, go ahead and keep going, Scott, like spin my back and stuff. It's just a fight down there, you know? I'm, this is like late stage guard recovery. You're like, you're gonna get passed if you don't do something crazy like this. So you can either just accept the pass and be like, okay, I'll try and escape side control. Or you can start turtling and kind of riding the edge a little bit like, oh no, he might take my back, but I might get out. I think it's worth flipping that coin and getting better in those positions rather than spending too much time trying to get good at like early stage guard recovering. Um, you'll, you'll find that the, the later stage guard recovering, if you're comfortable there and your opponent isn't, you, you're fine. Like I feel super comfortable defending my back because I just do this a lot rather than rely on flexibility and things like that. Any other questions? Yes. Right. 
Well, we're, remember, we're doing this uh, preemptively. So <clears throat> we're already turning as he's going to set up a knee cut position. So we're recognizing that he's going to... <coughs> so he's here, he did some sort of other pass that I blocked, and he transitions into the knee cut. If he's going to grab my my hand's already here. So if he tries to grab my elbow, we're not talking about like if he has knee cut and it's already like this. We don't want to do we don't want that to happen. We're trying to move as he moves. So no, we're not moving reactive to his guard pass, we're moving with his guard pass. So if he if he goes to this side, I'm doing the same thing. I'm already preparing myself to be over rotating in so that if he drops down into half guard or knee cut, my, my top arm is here to keep me safe with like pancake or any of those other push grips, okay? Anything else? Yes. Does it work the same? Uh, Scott was moving grip, but the guy used grip on you. What do you mean? Right, yeah, it's all the same. Yeah, and that, the reason that I'm bringing my arm across like this is because it messes up like all of their grips. If I leave my arm here, yeah, he is gonna grab this and try and choke me or like cross face me. But when I go like this, this the, grabbing my collar doesn't do anything. It doesn't rotate my head, it doesn't put shoulder pressure. This is the motion that keeps you safe. Like he's, he's trying to, he's putting all his weight on like a very strong kind of tent I've built here with my body that lets me like plant and get up pretty powerfully, even if there's weight on my back, okay? So let's try it. One, two. Okay. You can just put your hand on the mat. You can to put it on his arm. You can put it on his knee. It doesn't matter. You feel like, oh, the, the right move here is to jump to his back. But you also know that's the only move. So when you feel it, you just go with him and it'll mess the whole thing up. Yeah, and the cross face isn't that big of a deal. Nice. Very good. See, they think, they think the cross face will do something, but because you've already rotated your shoulder underneath, he can't get the leverage to drive it into your neck. If my bottom shoulder was like this, then the cross face might be a big deal, but you don't have to defend the cross face as much, and you don't have to defend like cross collar chokes when you over rotate in like this. Yep, this is fine, yeah. And then you need to get that bottom leg out. Yes. And then we're, we're gonna bring your hips kind of up and then back in underneath him. Yes. You just need a little more space. That's the right idea, but you kind of hit his legs on the way in. Just kind of move further. But that was right. I, th I think that th these kind of guard recovery movements are so much more realistic for white belts. But the problem is no one teaches white belts these moves. They teach them like a shrimping motion or like the leg kind of thing. But like, I think most, the most effective guard recoveries for beginners are these, where you kind of like turn into them and just stand up. Like that's a very useful skill to be able to stand up from being underneath someone. And I, it's not really taught well enough. The only, like think about it, the only thing we're taught to get up from bottom underneath someone is, is just this. It's kind of the same thing, but for whatever reason, it's not taught to like use it as a stiff arm to get up.